This is a, a draft that I did quite a while back. Um, this was turned into the court with an update. This was actually turned in as a part of the discovery process and we served the court with the evidence of registered mail. Weighed two and a half pounds, the package did, and I have the registered mail receipts. So this is the uh, f this is, this contains the facts, a brief summary, but it also contains the three properties that were found within the file, parts of the file, the, what I call the crook file, and then also parts of this shadow docket, what I felt were important. So it includes all three houses and the three loans. Now what the important thing to remember is Rachel thought she bought one home and one home only and she had one loan and one loan only and that was all she knew that was it period and she she made her payments because she, you know there are I am sure there are legitimate loans out there but this one just happens to be not legitimate So anyway, Rachel had one home and one home only, 422 Randolph Street. That's the transaction she thought she was uh, brought into. And she thought she closed on that on 314 of 2008. And she started paying uh, what she was told was First Horizons, but it actually was MetLife behind the scenes. And that's evidenced by the fact that there's a MetLife, 2009, they, MetLife sent out their tax package statement to Rachel for First Horizons. Now they merged in August of 2008. However, this was in March of 2008, and I have uh, actually talked to someone who said that there were two MetLife loans purged from their system because the loan numbers are in here because we've got the file on how they do the fraud. So anyway, this is what really happened. Happened, and this is a draft that uh, I did a while back. So a few of the numbers are off that's that's not that can be corrected in the documents so it's concerning uh, Rachel's foreclosure case is 89D02-1209-MF-0003343 so I looked at her documents that she gave me in her defense I found a thank you letter in a white folder that contained many papers this was sent to her after April 2008 I believe Tim Moore accidentally sent my child the fraudsters folder because I found in the file the following important original documents I also believe, believe Tim Moore sent them because when I called him on uh, around October 4th to October 7th 2012 and I have the phone records from my Comcast where I made the call <clears throat> He told me, oh my fucking God, this is a nightmare. Can I call you back? And he did. I did not answer or talk to him any further. Um, the original documents are in fact the summary along with documents from the administration building from our Wayne County, Indiana property lien and tax offices. So there were two offers. Uh, she made two offers. There were two what she thought were offers, but they were actually purchase agreements, and there were earnest money receipts within those purchase agreements, but in addition to that, there were promissory notes, which were not earnest money. These were actual promissory notes, which is the, the note that you send to the high road bank, the big bank, to have a future pledge on a contract based on that original promissory note. The thing about these are everyone must be informed or it makes future contracts null and void. It makes them of no consequence because of the fact that the folks did not inform the, the signator that they were using that promissory note. Then that makes the future contracts, according to the UCC's Article 389, that would make that void. Or, or uh, the future contract would be unenforceable. But they would still have the original transaction, which means that there would be ownership in the property. Complete equity. So see tab one, and I, and I give the tabs, but we don't need to do that. So uh, also there's two tilas. See tab two, one good faith estimate with two parts of the different loan amounts. There's two different loan amounts. There's three properties, 422 Randolph Street, 10,007 State Road, 38 Greens Fork, Indiana, 47345, and 4393 U.S. Highway 35 North, Richmond, Indiana, 47374. There's, uh, and I say see the proof, there's three loans. The amounts are $66,989 and 
$383. So I had that amount wrong. There's one note loan based on $67,383. Signed original MetLife agent for use with the trust. Amount of two or more, the amount of $66,898. These are liar loans. And a fax transmission communication string invoice from Abstracts Title of Richmond Incorporated. And I said, concerning clients, Lingle Real Estate and Paul Stickle of Stickle Properties, LLC. I discovered that Abstract's title of Richmond during this time had an agency relationship with Brian Steckel of Fidelity National Title Group. And his office is Lawyer's Title. Or that is at least how the receptionist answered the phone. She told me that Brian has agency or did with Mr. Boston, an attorney that supervises or runs Abstract's title of Richmond. And there was a role of principal, so she gave me Brian Steckler's cell phone number. And I communicated with him, and I'll share that on another present because it's pretty bad what the insurance companies are doing. I found original documents had the following three property association with what was reportedly a one-home purchase, and it is also shown in the loan application it was to have been for one property located at 422 Randolph and reportedly only purchase made by one Rachel M. Diddy. Yet the file cont folder contained three properties. 422 Randolph, 1007 Greens Fork, 4393 U.S. Highway 35 Richmond. I combined the purchase agreements after I went to the Wayne County Administration offices and gathered the relevant loans, deeds, etc. I then married the two purchase agreements via the addendums and they produced purchase agreement 1, purchase agreement 2, and purchase agreement 3 as seen. And I said, see forged affidavit in married, in married, uh, in married fax transmission, it states that Rachel's married and she was never married um, to anyone. So there was an affidavit stating that Rachel Diddy was married, and I recalled this. And when I got to the loans from the account, I noticed the loans or liens stated married man and mortgage and lien records, as seen below. The first is the true loan she should have had based on the January 21st, 2008 offer she made. Tim Orr told her that that offer was not. Uh, accepted by the seller but according to the documents it was accepted by the seller so they just kept that purchase agreement open they made a copy they have addendums that are designed in this uh, these uh, real estate forms that all of this ties back to a Philadelphia land law but these real estate forms are very special for instance um, it has the beginning of certain social security numbers on certain pages like where the signature is so that they know based on your name which forms which number lines to put in here and I'll show that later but anyway these they 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 the first offer that she made they told her it was rejected and that she would have to make another and she did, which was a purchase agreement like the first one. They made a copy of the first one that they told her wasn't accepted. So they were running two under January 21st, 2008 at least. And then the third one started on February 5th, 2008. She closed on 3 14, 2008. So there are other transactions that occurred here, but I'm going to focus on what was in the file. So the first purchase agreement, and these amounts are not right. The first first amount, the first amount was uh, for sixty-seven thousand three hundred and eighty-three dollars. Was the first amount that went to this four twenty-two Randolph Street, and that's the actual purchase agreement, January twenty-first, went to four twenty-two Randolph Street. Then. Um, I have proof showing that her and Paul Stickle were somehow purchasers. So then the second loan amount went to uh, 1,000. Um, hold on, let me go down here to make sure. The second loan, the first amount went to 422 Randolph. The second one went to um, for the for the. 67,000. The second one went to 4393 US Highway 35 North. Then the third one from February 5th, it went to the 10,007 State Road 38 Greens Fork, Indiana. Now they came in right away after her first payment. She made a payment to Title Abstracts of Richmond in cash and she made her first payment by April the 1st according to their own documents. Then they right away 
took this, <clears throat> took the loan from, they took the loan that they had given her and told her U.S. Bank was going to be coming in to service it. The thing is, U.S. Bank um, had, came in right at the time that they're saying they came in over here with Rachel under a, a re, a, a remod. They're coming in and saying that they somehow, uh, on the same date exactly. So you'll see it anyway, these through. And I go into some detail here. Notice page 27. Notes to myself, basically. And I go into the buy and sell, buyer and seller metropolitan life insurance companies program, the buy and sell and sell and buy. And then I'll talk about that in another time. So then here's Tony Baum, the married man. And then this is the uh, other owners. Now, this lady contacted me on Facebook. She, and I gave her my phone number. She's welcome to call me. Anyone's welcome to call me. The owners of record here at the time before Rachel were Charles and Annette Scott. This was Tony S. Bond was the owner here. And this was Leslie K. Lane or Leslie K. Mehaffey or Karen Leslie Mehaffey. And uh, uh, a Mehaffey. But there's some different Mehaffeys than what were living there. So I'm not sure what goes on there. Anyway, she can contact me. So I copied the loan applications, etc. All the original loan application documents, no duplicates. Letters to Rachel beginning with this mess. And I, then I put in the MetLife tax package. And uh, I'll go on with this one. So here's the first purchase agreement. And this is how she would have done it. Now this house is for 422 Randolph Street. The listing agent was not Josh Rader, it was Kristen Rader. They will try to say in an amendum that they want to get rid of Kristen Rader, but, and she is a listing agent on record, um, but they bring in Josh. Josh and Kristen are husband and wife, I'm assuming. They work for you too as the advertisement. So, in, in, uh, Tim Orr was Rachel's real estate agent. 121, 2008, Rachel M. Diddy, 422 Randolph Street, Township, Wayne county and then of course it'll say Richmond and if you'll notice the second one it'll be worded different here and it's she made an offer of 60,000 the earnest money here's the buyer admits submits $500 earnest money shall be applied to the purchase price the listing broker shall deposit the earnest money in its escrow account within two banking days of acceptance of this agreement and hold it until time of closing this is one thing he did he didn't get she didn't get that earnest money back and she can't remember if she paid another one or not um, but I am assuming just one payment we'll just assume one because it's bad enough what's happened anyway So as you see, it's called the Purchase Agreement for Improved Property. It's not an offer. Purchase Agreement, Improved Property. And notice the numbers that go down through here. They won't be uniform throughout this because they can switch to place. They've got like several page twos, several page threes, several page fours. And they notice the initials here. And it's still going down. And there's the date of February 28, 2008. That all these dates are important. They're anchor dates. What I did was I went down and wrote down all the dates because you'll find the other properties meet up with these. Not in year, but on date. And then RD again. Purchase agreement still. And then the numbers will start changing here. Um, this is where any repairs are 100. It'll change on the next one. 350, the date of November 2008. And still the initials, page 3 of 5. And then we've got 194. Seller to pay up to 2000 in buyer's closing costs. And of course, page 4 of 5. And this is the last page. Now, they didn't accept this, right? But as you see, the last page... Four of 5... Notice the warranty deed part. Oh, I'm sorry. I have four or five listed twice. Huh. <coughs> okay. And then there's page five of five. The expiration of offer unless accepted by seller and delivered to buyer by 7 p.m. 
the 22nd of January. So there will be a date that we'll find in here that I'll show that shows January 22nd date that they use. But here's 121-2008 and it says receipt by broker. I acknowledge receipt of earnest money deposit of $500. Note to be made good on February 1st, 2008. Tim Moore, he signed it. And this is very important. Her initial was down here too. Approved by and restricted to use by members of the Indiana Association of Realtors Incorporated. This is a legally binding contract. If not understood, seek legal advice. Property address and or initials. Now this is the deal. This is what's required to the High Road Bank in London. And this is a purchase agreement. If you read it, it talks about purchasing a house for improved property. So reportedly they didn't accept that offer. And there's a receipt of, and here's the promissory note. And what I find interesting is Richmond, Indiana is listed there. It's a promissory note. It's not earnest money. It's a promissory note. L108 is an international promissory note. It has before February 1st, date due, the amount of $500. Rachel Diddy, witness Tim Moore. They have the white copy for the office and a yellow for the drawer. The drawer. Now, this is the thing. She was not uh, notified of this. She wasn't to get these. You know, if somebody else has them, I'd like to see them because I have the original yellows. Now here comes, he told her it wasn't accepted. She'd have to do another offer. And she did. So then here comes purchase agreement number two. And it has Lingo Real Estate as the selling broker, listing broker Lingo Real Estate. And Tim Moore is the buyer's agent and Josh Schrader again. This is 25 of 08, Rachel Diddy, 422 Randolph, Township, Richmond, Lot 150, it's hard to read that, 4 Haynes, but anyway, it's different here than it was before. And then there's the 68,000 this time, which is key because that goes in line with the 98,000 of 938 South 17th, the earnest money again. 422 Randolph, see how it's written, and there's no initials. This is a purchase agreement. Then they're going no more than 35 days after acceptance of the agreement shall be allowed for obtaining favorable broker and seller, uh, favorable written commitment or mortgage assumption approval. It says closing March the 15th, 2008. And page 2 of 5, then up here at the top, it's got 200 instead of 100. Still has November the 8th there. No initials on this one. This is the same as the other one almost, and it may well be, except the seller is now required to pay $90. And then February the 6th, 2008, at 6 p.m. And that's 2 5 of 2008. Again, the earnest money. Notice the notes that circled. They circle a lot. This is their way. To be made good on or before closing, Tim Moore, 2 5 2008. Approved by and restricted to use by members of Indiana Association of Realtors. This is a legally binding contract. This is a master mortgage. And this transact these transactions. Then of course there's a promissory note. Richmond, Indiana again, two five, Rachel Diddy closing. Real estate on or before closing date due. It's hard telling how many times they hypothecated on this. Then Rachel Diddy, witness Tim Moore. Again, white office, yellow drawer. Drawer. So now here's how it really went. And I'm gonna start to show you how they ran it. This is purchase agreement number one, 121, Rachel M. Diddy, 420 Street. Now they've got Wayne County and Richmond here versus Richmond on the other one. And it's the same as the other one except for, and there's the 100 versus the 200. A copy, an amendment to the purchase agreement. Why would they be running a purchase agreement 
on an offer that was never accepted. And it just gets better and the actual copies got red. This has got red on it. The actual color photocopied, which I can go through those to show people if they need to see them. I'll do a quick run through, but I've got to work with what I have in order here. So there's 422 Randolph Street, 121, 2008 to go with the 121, 2008 agreement. Now the seller to have gutters installed for this purchase, FHA will require. Here is Rachel Diddy signing this like she was. And then there's Paul Stickle, 314 of 2008. This is a legally binding contract. If not understood, seek legal advice. And you notice the difference in the way these numbers are going here. And then here is a seller's disclosure. You'll see on the next document, but this is just exactly how it went. The next document I have seller seller's disclosure up here. So it's got Paul Stickle 314, but it has this signature here. There was a signature here at one time on 121-2008. Where did that go? Where could it have went? And it talks about these rules that they should be following, which means they didn't follow any of them. And this is page 2 of 2. The other was page 1, and this is page... Yeah, the other is page 1, and this is page 2. I think. I better, it might be on the back of a bug inspection report because they've got them in the original form. Then this just goes on down. So this is the 121 2008 agreement along with the promissory note, just like before. So that's how it actually went behind the scenes. Now here's number two, the one they copied of the first one. Again, first page, the same as last. 422 Wayne Richmond, 60,000. And then page two, same as last. And then, this is real slick. This is the closing date. They're tying this amendment to purchase agreement. They're dating it 2-5, but it actually goes to the 121. This is a tie in this amendment right here to tie in the 314, the 25, and the January 21st. So they add this in, dated in with the ones, and suddenly the listing agent is Josh Rader instead of Kristen Rader. And see the circle here like before on the promissory note? The buyer's signature is Rachel Diddy, 314, 2008, Paul Stickle, 314, 2008. Paul Stockle with these slashes and these dots and this circle and, the li and they're both buyers. Rachel bought a home. She never met this guy ever but they bought a home and this is a legally binding contract because they told her the offer wasn't accepted. So Here's the actual, what I showed you before, the seller's residential real estate disclosure. State form 46234, 4393 Northwest 74, 422 Randolph Street. That's the address, but this is the 4393 U.S. Highway 35 North. It was in the lingual papers, and they did this again in another case I can show you or two. Here is, again, the other page that I showed you. But here is the signature that was missing. It is uh, where they actually took great pains to lift this signature. And it's a 121, 2008 signature. And of course, we'll go on down. It's the same. And again, the promissory note. But the promissory note's for 121, 2008. That's why the signature's at the bottom of the 121 2008 and again the white now here comes the third one <coughs> this is the listing agent Josh Rader date 25 Rachel Diddy township it's no longer Wayne and Richmond over here it's Richmond here 
68000 which coincides with the other property. The fort is, this is a purchase agreement, the same as I showed you the second one on February 5th. Um, the closing date gives them lots of days to work with this, and they got March the 15th, 2008. They've got the circles going on, and the circles are important because that's their way to communicate. They've got 200 instead of 100 here. The seller will be required to pay $90 tax service fee per FHA. And then they have Rachel here, February 6, 2008 is the date. She must sign by. There's her signing. Page 5 of 5. And then the promissory note. Now, these are buyer and seller responses to uh, what needed to be done on the second, the February 5th purchase agreement reportedly. So 225-2008, it's what needed to be done. And they have this in here too. It's part of the addendums. Buyer's inspection response. And seller's inspection response. Now we're going to get into the truth in lending disclosure statement. This is neither a contract nor a commitment to lend. And I should have showed this in the shadow document. I will later then. I will go on down and show this later, how they're using this in these court cases. On Annette and Charles Scott's loan documents, they won't be aware of it. They'll put double X's in the preliminaries and the finals, and they're using both in here. So this is for the preliminary was issued a day after her offer, reportedly. And this is the Truth in Lending Act, the preliminary, and she reportedly on the second one was going to borrow $68,000. This E is very important here. This is for e-filing where they're getting into it electronically under the e-file. And I'm sure it's important for other things as well. If somebody knows, let me know what they are. But these are supposedly the payments are due 5151 2008, right? And it goes down to show it's going to stop on 4 1 2038. Well, that's a net states, too. These are net states, the same as a net. And notice the circle here. You are giving a security interest in the property located at 422 Randolph Street. There's no recording or filing piece on this. And it says property hazard insurance in the amount of $67,398 with a mortgage clause to the lender is required as a condition of this loan. And, uh, and it says hazard insurance is not available to the lender at an estimated cost of it's not an ANA. So this is overdue 4% of an overdue payment and will not have to pay a penalty and will be entitled to refund a part of the finance charge. And then this is the initial one they're saying. And notice it goes back to 1005, which was about the time that the foreclosures were happening to Annette. Now here's a final one issued on 314 reportedly, right? They use both of these in these this mess, but this dated 314 2008 Truth and Lending and it's got Rachel's old address of course in the property. Then it's got an amount of $65,278 da 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 and it says that 5-1-2008 are they're gonna that's when they're gonna be due and they're gonna be stopped on four one two thousand thirty eight. And then of course it's not circled here four twenty two Randolph, there is filing and recording fees on this one, and cannot assume the remaining balance due under original mortgage terms, which meant the one before meant that she could assume and let's I need to go back. I know this aggravates people, but I need to go back. Notice that's may assume subject to lender's conditions the remaining balance due under the original mortgage terms. So this is uh suddenly a preliminary that she can assume based on the fake um 
purchase um, agreement that they told her didn't take. So they're having her. That's all of that. That's for all of their insurance that they collected. Collected. This is what they actually ripped her off for under her identity. Isn't that a terrible thing to do to somebody? And this just proves that this is part of the one that they. This is for the wrong amount. This is for the sixty-six thousand nine hundred forty-nine the one that they tricked her into signing. Oh, may be entitled to refund a part of the finance charge and will not have to pay a penalty on the prepayment. But there's a, if you prepay your loan and on the other than regular, you may be ass assessed interest charges to the end of the month. Huh. And these are just what was in there. So it, they told the story. Here's a good faith estimate. Jessica, Jessica D. McGuire is the loan officer, reportedly. This is uh, Rachel Diddy. Gives the address. Gives her mailing address, which I'm sure they have something going on there too. Supposedly sales price sixty-eight thousand. Loan amount sixty-seven thousand three hundred and ninety-eight dollars. And that's the amount I was saying that. Uh, she was assigned originally and the base loan amount and loaned a da -da 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 -da. estimated closing date 3-7-2008 preparation date this was made on 2-6-2008 right okay well there's amounts from both of those uh, transactions the $90 there was $90 remember and there was two thousand dollars the seller was going to pay for something as well. This right here, though, there was a hundred. Yeah, so there should be two thousand dollars as well that the seller would play in up to closing costs so 90 in any way she was the seller so she paid the selling costs as well <clears throat> so these amounts sales price is 68,000 this is the amount and this is the loan that Jessica McGuire signed for I'll show you she had of course see a bunch of paperwork and just separate things different things from Rachel like have her taxes from 2005 forward brought forth so she could have the children's socials here is a very telling thing disclosure of information on lead-based paint and lead-based paint hazards property address 422 Randolph Street 4393 Northwest 74 this is 4393 US Highway 35 North and they know it down there I've called down there to talk to them about this as well and they know it. They have no idea what that means. They don't know why Lingle's doing that. They're saying at the land records and assessor's office. So this is a lead warning statement. And HUD comes in under lead warning statements, by the way, folks. So it says, presence of lead-based paint in or lead-based paint hazards. Check one below. Seller has no knowledge of lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards in the housing. And it's got Paul Stickles initials and the seller has no reports or records pertaining to lead-based paint Then it's got purchaser has received copies of all um, information listed above purchasers received the pamphlet protect your family from lead in your home purchaser has check one below received a 10-day opportunity to conduct a risk assessment for the presence of lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards or or Agent has informed the seller of the seller's obligations under 42 United States Code 4852D and is aware of his or her responsibility to ensure compliance. So, so hopefully the Kristen then is, because uh, that's who signed it, Kristen Rader. This is on 121, and Kristen Rader and Paul Stickle. And then Rachel Diddy purchased this reportedly with Tim Moore. And... Uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard that there are suits going on right now over this lead paint, uh, lead lead based paint, and uh, one of the real estate agents here in town. 
And again, here's the, the properties. 4393, um, again, Northwest 74, U.S. Highway 35. And there's Rachel's signature. And here is Exhibit A. Lot number 154 Haynes, addition to the city of Richmond, commonly known as 422 Randolph. And notice the check mark, they like to do that. This is just part of what was attached in the title paperwork. And here's the other one, Exhibit A, that was in the paperwork, and I'll show that in a moment. This is commonly known as 10,007 State Route 38, Greens Fork, Indiana, 47345. And there's the fax transmission, but I'll show that in more detail. And again, I may have listed this twice. I wanted the one without the signature. And it may be coming next, I hope. Nope. Anyway, you saw the one without the signature up above in the beginning. I'm not going to go strolling back up through there. Here starts the loans. As you can see, the amount they're coming in after Rachel 4 is $66,989. Here is a loan that was in that document and it's for $67,398 the lender calls number subject property it's for a purchase it's a primary residence fee simple leasehold show expiration date fee simple is what it says up here leasehold show expiration date it looks like they're together doesn't it and then of course it goes on to Purchase price sixty-eight thousand. That wasn't the sixty thousand, was it? So that amount that they're given is bogus. So the purchase price is sixty-eight thousand. That's the second offer. But was this is for the wrong amount? Sixty-seven thousand three hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Oh, maybe Judge Horn can take a look at this and finally understand their own file and how this inner workings work. Maybe I can help shed some light on the situation. And I want you to look. The interviewer and the applicant, folks. You're not the applicant. The loan officer is the one who applies for the loan. It's their electronic forms. They fill them out and it actually tells the applicant most most often to go ahead and uh, uh, if the credit records are wrong, delete them correct them or delete them. You don't have the ability to delete those. Only bank loan officers do. So, there's page four. Here's a new one. Every time it's an addendum, it adds, it makes like a new one. Again, this amount. First time home buyer, yes. Do you own more than four dwellings? No, but they brought her into more than that. And this, the statement of appraised value is determined by HUD FHA. Let's look at this amount right here. This is very important. This is on the amount for the loan that Jessica McGuire signed for, actually put her signature to, the only one with the signature she put her signature to the wrong loan amount and these folks think they're just going to ignore this take it up a bit more and go to the 800 mark there you go hopefully you can see that here Rachel has these three properties tied to her one home there's one home there ends up being three properties I go to the land records office they bring in another property under an anchor date search and it's 938 South 17th and it's for sale for 98,000 Rachel's is for sale for 68,000 as you can see this amount let's just yeah go up as high as we can go on this which I know it's not great pixelation but you know you can see for yourself right there that's a dollar sign 
It looks like a six flipped upside down or an eight, but anyway, it's uh, actually Rachel paid in certified funds. Uh, she paid $6,150, which was the amount of the first offer. So she paid 10% there based on that promissory note on future contracts that she was to have been informed about because her signature provided them with the money. She never received any money. She received no money. She received nothing of value either. So here's for the 67398 again. It's another addendum. The mortgage its owner's officers do not have financial interest in or ownership by or seller involved in this transaction. Right. <laughs> not true. I did an interview with uh, Chip Tatum, and uh, he talked about how they ordered them to carry HUD documents and mortgages, all kinds of them, out of the place. Um, and it coincides with kind of what's going on here. Here's a points, rates and net points negotiated on this wrong amount, $67,398. <laughs> And they've got the bond, FHA. Why? Because there's plenty of writer loans behind the scenes. Rate lock disclosure, 8-6-2006. This is one of the ways they'll get folks, too. It's not valid. Unless signed and dated by all applicants in the First Horizon Home Loans, a division of First Tennessee and a representative, right? Okay. Well, where is it? Because it's never been signed. But they make it valid behind the scenes. The rate lock disclosure, by the way, is a day after Rachel's birthday. I find that interesting. So again, here is the preliminary. <clears throat> but this time... The two six two thousand no, this is this is the same one that we showed before. Five one to four one. And you'll see this on a nets. Hers are due four one. And Rachel's are due five one. But on the one they're due four one actually. Uh, this loan does not have a demand feature. Security, you are giving a security interest in the property located at 422 Randolph Street. You, you, uh, assumption may assume subject to lender's conditions the remaining balance due under original mortgage terms. They didn't charge a recording fee. It's for the wrong amount, $67,398. Uh, X is not available through the lender. And they talk about a late payment. Will not have to pay a penalty. Will not be entitled to a refund of part of the finance charge. Of course this okay. And these systems, the Wolzer Clue Financial Service VMP or they derive from the bankers. The bankers uh, the banker lawyers used to have a follow had the contracts and then this company here came in and took in in the CBF systems. I've checked them out as well and in some of the consumer financial services, um, some of the patents and inventions under some of this work. Now here is the brand new loan amount, $66,949. And of course it's got an agency cause number here in lender case and I have all that. And It's got dependents listed on this one. And of course it's got them here too. I think she included them here. Um, no, maybe on the next one. This amount is very interesting. 
because I've got some proof on this, what they did to her behind the scenes on this, and they better know I have it. They should. It was produced to them. If they did their homework, they'll find it on what they actually did. I caught them trying to frame her. So here's the 314. Here's like we saw before with Jessica D. McGuire's name, right? And again, the addendum, wrong amount again. I want to see if, I want to make sure there's, I think there's amounts of 75,000 in here. Yeah. See this amount of 75,000? She bought the home. Okay, 75,000 was the appraisal value given. 68,000 was the purchase price on that one that Jessica did above. There's a direct endorsement approval for a HUD FHA insured loan for the 66,000. Here's a no. Do you own or have you sold other real estate within the past 60 months on which there was a HUD FHA mortgage? No. Is it to be sold? So that's if you would answer yes. And this is the thing. They used her identity and fraud and frame, basically just ruined the reputation of the identity. But they, they, for HUD only, for properties constructed prior to 78, I have received on lead, ba uh, lead paint poisoning. It says not applicable. So why was Kristen Rader up there under a, a lead-based paint disclosure signing her name? And she is the listing agent. I'll show that. But why is she signing her name? And here it's saying on this loan that they're coming in under. Um, U.S. Bank is that somehow that didn't matter that that didn't that wasn't applicable to this property that just shows her uh, Rachel doesn't recall that either what we did find was my ex-husband went down the basement they were having problems he went down the basement and there was a water pipe he went to to loosen it up and the paint came off of it and they had actually that's number four the page four or four so we're going to start with another one and uh, it, they had lead pipe, uh, water pipes running through their house. They have the lead water pipes running through the house, and she was not informed. So those children must be up on the other uh, loan amount. That's where they took the identities at. Then there's 68000 And it says cash from borrowers. See, it shows right here $5,145. Well, she gave six uh, six thousand one hundred and fifty dollars, but this is cash from borrower. Three fourteen two thousand eight. Jessica McGuire. And she had lived at her prior address for a number of years, so and was a good renter and here's the wrong amount again purchase existing home previously occupied in here somewhere they say that it was occupied and it wasn't occupied um, Annette and Charles had been gone for a while they'd just been using their identity I suspect complete the following HUD FHA do you own no yes it's the same thing no if if yes, submit HUD. Do you own more than four dwellings? Well, yeah, Paul Stickle owned like a whole, like 9,000 transactions and never got in trouble for any of them. What he did, that chick went to jail. He didn't. Here's a direct endorsement. Oh, 
hopefully we're nearly done with these. See, I get tired of them. They took out all kinds of them, and they're in there. Um, they're long pieces of paper. <laughs> these aren't the normal size papers. They're, they're long. When Tammy Lynn Ortman, that attorney that came in, had her do it, uh, her signature on the deposition this judge ordered, she did some of that with this too. And um, I just hope somebody that can will do something about this. So now we're going to go into the abstracts title of Richmond. And this is very important. Up here at the top, what I did was it was stapled together. There is a page missing at the beginning. This page one. So this is page two. There is a page one missing, and I believe there's a page 11 missing. But this is the phone number um, for the title abstracts of Richmond, I believe. And here is, or first Richmond mortgage. But here is the actual order abstracts of Richmond Incorporated. So I keep calling it title abstracts. It's abstracts of Richmond. And it says invoice, date of February 11, 2008, title number. 2008-0156. Now, the amount of insurance, Commonwealth Land and Title Insurance Company, owner's amount, 68000 Now, you would think that's what Rachel was getting the owner's insurance for, 68000 for the 422 Randolph. See the mortgage amount to be advised. Stick and transactions for Stickle Properties, LLC, 422 Randolph Street, Richmond, Indiana. That was not his property at this February 11, 2008 time. It, well, he was not the owner of the record. And as a matter of fact, they vested the land in him March the 12th, 2008. And any property cards that show him being on there, there's always a print date up in the right hand, uh, upper right hand co corner that'll show it's always after 2009. They did not do it till 2009 because he did not fill out the book at the Platte Room until 2009 and he did all his transactions at one time because he did so many is what the clerk said in the corner in the Platte Room. So this is a invoice for a commitment on title. It's an owner's policy for 269 The owner is not Rachel at this point because they're listing Stickle Properties and that's the title number for Stickle. The loan policy is $50 to document prep. This right here is usually $5 and sometimes it was 3 So anyway, it's $10. That leads me to believe there was two properties. It was faxed on 220 accordingly from... Now this is a thing. This is... I'm going by the date February 11th. Here's one of 13 and here's 2 of 10. So we might be missing page 13, but anyway, this is from Abstracts of Richmond, and this is from that Premier Mortgage, which is where First Horizon Home Loans was located at, and Jessica McGuire operated out of back in 2008 under a Michael Wagers who was with Somerville National Bank, who was operating a bank out in front of Walmart without having an operating license to do so. They're a bank out of Ohio. I called them about that, and that thing was shut down. So here's page three. Here's a warranty deed. Stickle Properties, LLC. That's the seller. Paul Stickle owned this. Of Wayne County State conveys and warrants to Rachel Diddy, Lot number 154, subject to the second installment of real estate taxes for the year 2007 due and payable in 2008, and all subsequent taxes which grantee herein assumes and agrees to pay. This is the thing. In 2006, reportedly Paul Stickle bought the home. They were carrying forward a balance under Annette and Charles Scott's name in 2007 of an amount that was not correct. The, the normal amount was 185 a month. This amount was 600 and something dollars right off the bat. So, and it wasn't from 2007 due and payable in 2008. It was from 2006, they were saying, on the, on the tax cards. So, here's the, 
the second page. This is just title commitment. This instrument prepared by Richard E. Boston, attorney at law. And page 4 of 10, 3 of 13. There's page 5 of 10. So we might be missing 4. I'm not sure. Um, I don't think we're missing anything here. But this is interesting. Effective date 2-5 of 08. This is the thing right here. That is how they backdate in parentheses. The Alta, uh, American Land and Title Association and I talked. And they provide those forms and those do take it back to certain t dates and time. Um, and th you'll see the parentheses most often down at the bottom of forms and things that'll show different dates. And so the Alta owner policy for 2006 that was going in 2008 and hadn't been updated till 2012 was actually being backdated to 2006 in one system. So the proposed insured, Rachel Diddy, was going to get an alter owner, alter owner policy effective 2-5 of 08, it's saying, at 8 a.m. There's another timestamp. But it was actually February 5th, 2006. And the Alta loan policy, 2006 proposed insured, would be for Horizon Home Loans, a division of the Tennessee Bank National Associates and or the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development of Washington, D.C., their respective successors and assigns as their interest may appear. That's very interesting because no one was supposed to have seen this. And uh, the estate or interest in the land described or referred to in the commitment and covered herein is fee simple and is the, as the effective date hereto vested in stickle properties. So if I think about this, 2-5-2006 is when they were foreclosing on a net about that time and if they could date it back to that time, they would keep up that commitment, that secret hidden commitment Paul Stickle would be doing. The Wayne State of Indiana described as follows. See Exhibit A, a attached. Well, what you're going to see here, folks, isn't good. And, of course, here's an authorized agent. And I have all of this uh, completed by these folks. Ballot only if Schedule B and cover are attached. The following are the requirements of, this is Schedule B, 1, from Stickle Properties, LLC, 2, Rachel Diddy. Mortgage from Rachel Diddy, 2, First Horizon. Mortgage from Rachel Diddy, 2, First Horizon. Pay the full consideration in for the account of the grantors or mortgages. Pay all taxes, charges, assessments, levies assessed against subject premises, which are due and payable. Filing a disclosure of sales information from the Wayne County Auditor. Must we must be furnished with certified copy of its operating agreement and or certified copy of resolution by the members of Stickle Properties LLC authorizing the sale of proposed insured premises which must also identify the members authorized to execute the deed in lieu of thereof a recitation upon the deed indicating that it is being executed by an authorized member in conjunction therewith we must also be furnished with a recent certificate of existence showing that the LLC remains in good standing in the state of Indiana. Pay and have released record that certain $64,000 mortgage from Stickle Properties Company to Farmer State Bank dated and acknowledged November the 13th, 2007 and recorded November the 14th, 2007 at document number 2007011474 in the Office of Recorder of Wayne County have released of record that certain assignment of leases and rents from Stickle Properties LLC, a limited liability company, to the Farmer State Bank, dated and acknowledged November 13, 2007, and recorded November the 14, 2007, as document number 2007-011475. Is that the same one? So we got four, 474 and 475 in the office. Okay. 
pay delinquent real estate taxes for the year 2006 due and payable 2007 the amount of $629.06 plus penalty and an unknown amount. Well, Rachel was uh, told that she had to pay, let's see, $314. Anyway, she paid this amount. Rachel paid this amount. And that wasn't part of the original amount, which was 2007 taxes payable 2008. This is basically two agreements within this fax transmission. And then here's Exhibit A, page 6, lot number 154, reportedly, commonly known as 422 Randolph Street. Now, there's a problem, though. That's page 6 of 13. And here is where is Schedule B, first installment. This shows where he owed this, but this shows taxes for the year 2006 due and payable 2007 in a lien in the following amounts. Duplicate number, taxing unit Richmond, 314.53.34. Taxes for the year 2007 not yet due and payable 2008, a lien in amount unknown. Owner's policy, mortgage from Rachel Diddy to First Horizon Home Loans. We have made a judgment search against Rachel Diddy and found the following, none found. Information is the acreage in the legal description is shown for conveniences only and should not be construed as ensuring the quality of land set forth in the description. Page 8 of 10, 7 of 13. Here's the other page 9. Exhibit A goes into being part of the Northwest. Northwest, remember, section 27. Township 17, Range 13 East, Wayne County, commonly known as 1007 State Road 38, Greens Fork, Indiana, 47345, page 8 of 13 and page 9 of 10. And these are just the back pages of these Commonwealth uh, things that were in there. And as you can see, there's two of them, so... So we're actually getting there. I think I'll stop right at the loans. Maybe. Maybe not. So here's the mortgage affidavit. Rachel Diddy being duly sworn deposes and says they are now the they are now the owner of the premises situated in the county of Wayne, state of Indiana, briefly described as follows. Lot 154, Haynes, Wayne County, Indiana. Notice it's not to the city of Richmond. And it's for the wrong loan amount. And they're saying, elevator lightning deponent stated in the United States against the remaining uncanceled record, bankruptcy or insolvency have ever been instituted by or against the deponent. Deponent further deposes and says that he has present possession of all premises. And it says he or she will mean the same thing. Pre present possession part of the premises and remainder is rented as tenant or tenants under him or rented the entire premises to a tenant or tenants under him. Deponent further deposes and says that he or is they are each over 18 years of age and that they are husband and wife. That such marital condition existed on and has continued uninterrupted since the date of their acquisition of title to said real estate. Deponent further deposes and says he is not, has not executed any lease or contract of sale. She didn't. They did in her name. This is for the wrong amount. And this judge has helped them to do this. He should be ashamed. This is Sean Sorrell now on um, Annette and Charles Scott's, their papers at the courthouse, at the land records. You'll see her signature at the actual shadow docket. The Sean Sorrell is different than that, but it's the same one. So here appeared Rachel Diddy, who acknowledged the execution of the foregoing instrument, who having been represented uh, therein contained are true. They brought this Sean Sorrell in to do another affidavit against Rachel. And this judge has allowed it. <laughs> I was I I I obeyed the law. I thought I was a law abiding citizen, you know, member valuable member of the public, pay my taxes. Uh I didn't expect this at all. 
So I guess that I've been living in La La Land. I had no idea that I would be treated so badly for trying to bring forth the identity theft of the um, children and people. And that includes my own. That's how I found it. But everybody in this community to bring it forth and have been met with outright hostility. I've been accused of being... Uh, Oh, she's crazy. She's this. She's that. Well, I'm not so crazy when you're looking at their documents. It doesn't look so crazy then, does it? Because I am sane. I have a sound mind. I have a physical infirmity. There's My mind works just fine. Here's the wrong amount for this loan. This is what... Uh, Is this is what was in the file for Rachel? This P and this is for the 422 Randolph that Rachel got um, when she on 314 2008 reportedly. This address, this uh, I don't quit doing that. I need to get that off of that redaction. Uh, P.O. Box 809 Memphis, Tennessee was Brandon Allen of DTZ Barnicky, right out of Kansas. I mean, um, Canada. So he was, that was where the first payment was to have went to. That's who had that post office box. That was MetLife in uh, Memphis, Tennessee at the time as well. Getting on May 1st. And then, and then any principal interest remaining on the, the first day of April. So it's the same as Annette's was. Notice that there are no Alanges marked here. There are also no initials. This is a double-sided document. It shows 4%. And then here is the note. The mortgage, I mean. Shows Rachel Diddy this. And this is a double-sided one as well. Due and payable on April the 1st, 2008. But the first one is due April, um, March, M May the 1st. So this is the end date of it. But they're bringing this as April 1st, 2008. And notice amended to 2001. They've got 2007 here in here as well, like I told you on the dates. And it's got 422 Randolph. It's also got, there's also one for 10,007. And then, of course, here again is the dates. This is an Indiana form. These are multi-state notes. That's what they're called. RESPA. Folks, there's some things going on under qualified written requests from RESPA that these attorneys are going through these files and changing the ownership of. Some attorneys, I've found. Not just myself. Other people have as well. Out there in uh, Colorado and for sure. So I'm going slow enough, so maybe because my friend, I have a friend, several friends that help me research so they can see it and stop because a friend of mine, Amy's already helped a great deal. She's finding all kinds of stuff. Go, Amy. So here is, if you'll notice, these writers. None of them are marked. There's seven of eight. And there's eight of eight. And that was blank inside the folder. Now here is March the 18th, 2008. Space above this line for recording. This is a loan number, the case number. Rachel Diddy, U.S. Bank. March the 14th, 2008 is a date. This is one of five. This is a HUD modification agreement, it's saying. And it was made on 10-1-10. As of January 1, 2011, the amount payable under the note and security instrument is 69600 and da, da 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 So this is from U.S. Bank. So this is not an order. But this is what U.S. Bank came in stating in their court case. So now I'm getting into what's actually on file. This was what was actually sent to Rachel, though, and she did not uh, sign it. And there's proof of that as well.
I may have my pages messed up here, but maybe not. Here is a standard flood, flat, uh, flood hazard determination form for U.S. Bank for 422 Randolph Street and expires December 31st, 2011. The map panel effective date is revised 8-16-82. Regular program federal Federal flood insurance is available. Community participates in NFIP. Is building mobile home a special flood area? No. Related to an existing loan original certification number, it gives that. And then here's the parent company, U.S. Bank Corp. Service Providers. Date of determination, 106-2011 at 10.18 a.m. Certified. And it gives the number, Life of Loan. It's produced on 1-7-2011 at 1.50 a.m. It's a FEMA form. So here is that this notice date is set as 1-6-2011, National Flood Insurance Program Community, Richmond, City of. So it's for FEMA funds. And this is what U.S. Bank sent her. And I think this is in the Land Records Office, too. I've seen this. It shows mirrors. It shows the others. See the double, double X's. And we'll want to go up here real quick again because it's going to show March the 13th, 2003 versus March the 14th, 2008. And this is with Charles Scott and Annette Scott as husband and wife. And they would need Charles's identity to collect on the insurance behind the scenes. This has got a Charles and Annette's name. Um, 14 of 16. Fifteen of sixteen. The thirteenth of March, just like and there's the Sean Sorrells, just like Rachel's. See this? There's a legal description. 16 of 16. Here's the correspondence on the undisclosed sheriff's deed of October 6, 2006. Here is a note. Here's the adjustable rate note, 313 of 03, 422 Randolph Street, $45,500, 9.740% interest on April the 1st, it's beginning May 1st, 2003. Page 2 of 7. Twelve point seven four zero or less than nine point seven four percent. This is the kind of rate they're getting. Something's going on here behind the scenes. My interest rate will never be lower than the initial interest rate stated in paragraph two of this note. And just for the benefit, just in case Annette and Charles are watching, it's going to be nine point seven four zero. This is for the same date.
and then it has the Nets name only, but it's for the same amount. Sign original only, page four of four. Four of seven, I mean. Here it is. Do not record attached to note. This is what's in that judge's file. So, except there's a multi-state, except, and it goes back to 96, except they did not uh, have this over at the land records office on this part. We can, I'll go back into Docs Pop and get those documents that I purchased because these are not the actual certified uh, loans. So here's an allonge, and it said there was no allonge to the loan. Oh, Rachel said there was no allonge. There's electronic laser forms. There is the final. See the double? And it's 313. 2003. Rachel's was on 2 6 2008 and the preliminary uh, Rachel's was 3 14 2008 was the final. The preliminary was February 5th or February 6 2008. So here's a Nets loan just the same way but this is the final double marked and they begin on 5 1 and they end on 4 1 2033. This loan does not have a demand feature. Notice the double X's. This loan has a variable weight rate feature. You're giving a security interest in the property located at 422 Randolph Street. Triple X's here. Cannot assume the remaining balance due under the original mortgage terms. $50. Property hazard insurance in the amount of 45500 Marked twice. So let's see. 45500 would be... $81,000. 15 days, 5% prepayment. You have, you may have to pay a penalty and you will not be entitled to refund a part of the finance charge. Then it's got Annette and Charles Scott's names on here. So, then we're going to go into Rachel's. Um, I'll have to come back in and add Rachel's in. The actual, because I want to go over the warranty deeds on when Rachel, that's all we know on this property. On this particular uh, setup. Leslie K. Lane Mahaffey. This is the NatCo Credit Union. And this is 2-6 of 2008. That's the date that I was talking about on the Tylas and on the second purchase agreement. And this is for the 10,007 U.S. Highway 38, Greens Fork, Indiana, or State Road 38. Leslie K. Lane, me happy. And Michael D. Me happy. This is what's on the deed. It's from Natco Credit Union. The amount of $60,800. And it's due payable October 30th, 2022. It has the address of 10,007 State Road, State Road 38, which you saw in the title policy. So we'll go down through here. I've already read all of this and picked it apart and tore it apart. And these are actually these lines you're seeing are the photocopies where this is photocopied. Um, pulled from the photocopies I had done. Notice this, all these stable marks here. Oh, notice how they're not here. because the HUD sends out letters. Like in 2008, they sent out a lead paint advisory letter to, to actually here in Richmond, Indiana. The example is given. It's a 2008 letter under HUD uh, and lead paint 
base disclosures telling the clerks what to do to update the pages. And they do that by running them under bankruptcy corrections of records. Isn't that right, my friend in Colorado? She knows. We found it. So this is for the 10,007 county property. There's more staples too that matches up with the others. The first page didn't have them on there though. Hmm. That page doesn't have them on there either. Isn't that interesting? Because these are from the Land Records Office. Now notice this. Uh, on Annette and Charles's property on the 422 Randolph Street, I want to make certain that I get everything from the Land Records Office, so I'm going to have to dig them out of the, I don't know, seven or eight boxes I have of stuff and get those scanned in because those I may have found in the court case because they had to have a way to keep track of the numbers, so that might have been part of what I had copied. So I'm just trying to show the three owners and what they had on record. So these don't have the boxes in them, but look at all the adjustable rate writer, graduated payment writer, balloon writer, other, condominium writer, plan unit development writer, rate improvement writer, one to four family writer, bi-weekly payment writer, second home writer. I will say this, that that uh, Lane, uh, Miss Lane contacted me on Facebook and I encouraged her to contact me. I gave me her, gave her my phone number and it was it said Lane Bond so there was a name after that and the uh, the bond is the uh, 4393 US Highway 35 so I gave her my phone number asked her to call me and she certainly can now this is my friend Kim Harmeyer she worked there at uh, Natco Credit Union so here's Leslie K Lane me happy aka Leslie K Lane and then there's a Michael D me happy is what it's saying. Rachel is Rachel Michelle Diddy. So this is on October 31st, uh, uh, yeah, 2007. Leslie K. Lane Mehaffey, aka Leslie K. Lane, Michael D. And notice the D, how that's done. Oh, that's a cool site. Delete that. What was that about? That's an interesting D there. I have to I have to go zoom in on that one. Yep. It's a double over. As my friend Gary Michaels would say, and he is the boss on this kind of stuff. He's a good forensic investigator, I'll tell you that. Let's see. Uh, Gary Michaels from for Forensic Fraud. June the 12th, 2013. This is page 7 of 7. Now, this is from Natco Credit Union. Oh, I better go all the way down to 200 so that I don't miss anything. Yeah. And this is Kim Harmeyer. My friend. And let's go on down. This is being this section of da 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 da, -da and it talks about this property 10,007 and look at what they did recorded November the 9th 2007 they marked this out this is on file at the land records office for sure and they've got it recorded February the 6th 2008 why I'll show you why why would they have to change the date to February 6th 2008 On 1-10-2011, there was a satisfaction of mortgage. This certifies that a certain mortgage was executed by Natco Credit Union, 582, 
to Leslie K. Lane Me Happy and Michael Me Happy on November the 6th, 2007. That's the date, remember, of the checks to the judge calling for $60,800 and duly recorded in the rec Record of Mortgages of Wayne County, State of Indiana Instrument Number, has been fully paid and satisfied and the same is hereby released. Witness my hand and seal this 10th day of January 2011. Remember when I showed you that U.S. Bank was coming in after Rachel um, on the wrong loan amount on Jan in January 2011 saying that she modified a loan that was never modified and it was signed before them this 10th day of January 2011 and recorded January 10th 2011 and here on 127 2011 remember the date of January 28th Rachel had to get something done by in comes the mortgager Michael D. Mahaffey and Leslie K. Mahaffey, formerly known as Leslie Karen Lane, who are husband and wife, lender, U.S. Bank National Association and National Banking Association, organized under the laws of the United States. And there is where the U.S. Bank is coming in under these fake mortgages. So Indiana Mortgage, not for FM and it tells what they're not for and notice this uh, initial so we're going to go one to six this would be two of six three of six four of six five of six and six of six so other terms, writers, you notice these lines right here? See these squares? This is how it was copied. Maybe they do or don't know about it, but they need to come on forward. So this was sign 1, 3 of 11. If they don't, they need to come forward because I'm just trying to get help for the fraud that's happened. And if they don't know about it, then it could be that somebody's wife doing this. So here's, look at how they did the legal description. Page one of one. They did a parcel number. Name, Leslie Mehaffey. Deed reference, 11-30-2010 the order date. And it's the exhibit date in the state of Indiana. And that's the four, uh, the uh, 10,007 state route, and it's January 27, 2011. This is when U.S. Bank, who's foreclosing upon Rachel with a mortgage document dated the same date, and I've shown you the wrong loan amounts that they're coming in after. So U.S. Bank, and this is an original property that's tied to the title. And this Judge Horn has allowed false documents to run through his court, and, I, and, and I've, I've stated that on the record. So here is a limited liability company special warranty deed. This is for the 4393 U.S. Highway 35, folks. As per legal description on sheet attached here to and marked as Exhibit A, this indenture, the Syntex Home Equity Company, conveys and specially warrants to Tony S. Bond, an adult, for $10. The real estate property taxes for the second year half of 2004 payable in November 2005 and subject to real estate property taxes now this is in 2005 reportedly years don't matter in this system though and the address given in one of these is wrong or or not right and it ties to a condominium across the way that was owned by a uh, Donald Wingett, a common council member. Back then he wasn't, I don't think, but uh, it was his property at that time. And it's special because there's going to be something it was used for. So we're going to go on down. This is the 4393. And this shows 1031. This is Exhibit A. All 
August 12, 2005 is when it was entered for taxation. And then here's another one, 8-12-2005. This is for 4878 U.S. Highway 30, that's the address given, right? Tony S. Bond, a married man. The mortgagers is, whose address is, State of Michigan. This is for 100, and this is not for that property, though. This is for, is given August 1, 2005. The loan amount, the agency case, I think that's Rachel's agency case number. Wouldn't that be something if that was? I have to check that. <laughs> I do. One five one seven nine one zero five seven three seven zero three. Okay. August first. A married man whose address is and let's see, it'll show the address of uh forty three Okay, Wayne County, Indiana, C attachment, which has the address of 4393 U.S. Highway 35 North. And the way they do these meets and bounds, they've done a, they've always done a lot of things on U.S. Highway 35. My good friend Judson with them, who's helped me, can tell you that. Guess I better get moving quicker, huh? So notice none of these are X'd. Shirley Moore, she's out of Michigan. Interesting that uh, Robin Moore is the office manager down at Abstracts of Richmond Incorporated and Tony S. Bond, of course. The the guy that owned that before that was Jack Senex, I think, and I knew Jack and his daughter, I believe. So the August the, the first day of August two thousand five. And it's August 12, 2005. And then we've got 6-26-2006, the assignment of mortgage. Plymouth Finance. See attachment. It's got the instruments. It's got one marked out with the book and volume and library number. It's August the 5th, 2005. Execute assignment of mortgage on August the 5th, 2005. They just took Rachel's house on August the 5th, 2005, folks. Under the fake warranty deed. Uh, under the fake mortgage, I mean. So here's Jennifer. Holly, an account manager. And, of course, AKA 4393 U.S. Highway 35 North. And there's June the 26th, 2006. But let's go on. That's good that they executed this on August the 5th, 2005. It's coming full circle, and it shows the fraud and who all committed it. I don't know what they think they're going to do because this is going on. Um, the record in court, it's over. Here's, of course, none of the information filled out again. And then here's an individual acknowledgement. August the 1st, personally appeared Tony S. Bond, a married man, August the 1st, 2005. This is August 12th, 2005. But remember, August 5th, that mortgage was done. And that's when, okay, now here's probably a copy again. Okay, here's an assignment of mortgage. 11, or 12-20-2006. Washington Mutual Bank, formerly known as Washington Mutual Bank, 4th day of December 2006. Tony S. Bond, 
81 of two, said mortgage dated 8-1-2005 and made by Tony S. Bond to Plymouth Exchange Mortgage Corporation, recorded in book page, Office of Recorder of Wayne, uh, Recorder of Wayne Richmond. Yeah, this is uh, Wayne County, Michigan. And I, this could be Wayne County, Michigan, but, and I'm saying that, I'm thinking to myself out loud here, Tony S. Bond to Plymouth Exchange Mortgage Corporation, which is located in Michigan. And I happen to know for a fact that he signed that on 8-5. It said up above. So let's go up to that one. I have to now. August 4, 2005. It is witness wherefore the undersigned assigner has executed the assignment of mortgage on August 5, 2005. Okay. So there's that assignment of mortgage. I've Okay. December 20th, 2006. Here's 4-3-2009. This is going to be important because it comes into play. Tony S. Bond, a married man. This is when they foreclosed upon him. And it went back to the investment company that's housed in Lingo Real Estate. So, according to the address... In a consideration of the payment and full satisfaction of all indebtedness secured, Wells Fargo, whose address, being the present legal owner of said indebtedness and thereby entitled to an authorized to receive, original, borrow, Tony S. Bond, married man, Plymouth Exchange Mortgage Company, a Michigan corporation, date of mortgage 8-1-2005, loan amount $101,409, Recording date 8-12-2005. Document number. Where's Spargo? So they released that, but they backdate in the system. April 3rd, 2009. It'll catch up in just a minute. Here is 3-4-2009. Borrower is Tony S. Bond. This is from Fountain City Bank. That's where Paul Stickl is. Now this 9C1348. I need to find out what that is. This is dated February 26th. 2009 together with all writers to this document and remember I showed you where the writer loans aren't being recorded another thing is his initials they always got some of them have initials after of them and some don't he'll do it like that like that one with initial at the end. They gotta mark their fraud, you know. Notice, February 26, 2009. I can, if I can get this advanced tool off. Well, I just am not going to be able to anyway. This 1 to 4, this 4 is butted up against this dash. If I take that out and put it into a Word document, it'll break it into a 14 family writer and these squares turn into circles. And I think I'll go ahead and show that because I broke down a whole complete one of these multi-state notes. And it needs to be shown. I don't know a thing. I don't know of a damn thing after what they've done to my children and grandchildren. Or not what they've done. They did it to the government. To the government that I thought was my government. Hell, I didn't know it wasn't my government. I thought it was my government. 
was thinking it was my government all along. Notice those little dots there. They didn't do that before. They do it on each of the different ones because they're making these all up at one time and going backwards. Just like Annette and Charles Scott, they left the, I, I, it's my understanding they left town and thought everything was resolved and taken care of. And maybe it wasn't. And they had no idea, see. And the same could be true for the other people in this mess. Because they for sure got an insurance policy started, an insurance mill going on, and they started it right with Rachel. On that transaction, anyway. February 26, 2009. TB. March the 4th, 2009. 5-18-2009. See, 3 18 2009 is when, uh, ooh, March 10th, 2009. That's just when they recorded it. Ah, oh, they're good. I will freak out if this shows up under March the 18th, 2009. That will mean that that warranty deed she brought in is bringing in this mess, and she's thinking nobody could ever explain it, right? Because, so here's the 4393 North U.S. Highway. It's a different address because the other one's 43. 93 U.S. Highway 35 North. The North is not before it. Attached to Exhibit A is made March 10th, 2009. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There's the TB. Look how that looks different than the other ones you'll see. Oh, these do look different than his other ones. Look. They truly do. Look at that TB. See that up there? Now, I'll go back. That's a, this is the second page. See? I bet they stole his identity too. Kathy Tiemann, 310-2009. Beth Beatty, 310-2009. Tony S. Bond, 310-2009. That doesn't even look like his writing. Page 7. Copyright Compliance Systems. Consumer Real Estate Security Instrument. Property description. Look at this. It is altered and clearly so. Well, too bad I can't get that thing out. I ought to be able to move that. Of course I can't. Oh. Huh. Sorry about that, folks. Recorded May the 18th, 2009. But I want you to look at this. And this would make it March the 18th, 2009. Is it one of the main dates? This doesn't look right. This has been altered. See, they created this on the on a paper file. They did. And uh, from the documents, it shows the people who were involved were Lingo Real Estate. Um, the signatures on there were Josh Rader, Kristen Rader, Tim Orr, Paul Stickle of Stickle Properties, who also spells his name Stockle, 
the Tony S. Bond on the mortgage documents and the Leslie K. Lane, Leslie K. Mahaffey, Karen Leslie Lane, Karen Lane Mahaffey, who's married to Michael D. Mahaffey, Rachel Michelle Diddy, could be Michael D. Mahaffey for all I know, um, and maybe not, we'll have to see. And then Tony S. Bond and Charles and Annette Scott. Um, there is a Charles and Scott from 1909 that there was a, was a veteran. There's an affidavit stating that Charles, though nobody was a, in the armed services. Then there's an Ann Scott or Annette Scott one that's on the German, uh, has a German birth certificate, but that's common. My daughter-in-law has a German birth certificate, and it's asked, they told her it had to be on file here locally. So there's a forgery on one of the warranty deeds, though, and this may become very important. So here's 9-14-2011. For value previously received, main source bank hereby assigns to Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, Jones Drive, August the 23rd, 2011. September the 14th, 2011, that property was foreclosed upon as well, you see. And it was a part of a sp split with the state of uh, Indiana. And the treasury clerk helped me find the actual property. Here is the RESPA disclosure. This is very important. It's one of the simplest things people can do. This disclosure, I don't care if you did get it, the, if you did sign on a certain day, it should not be dated any no backdating should be occurring in your loan documents. And it says you may assign, sell, or transfer the servicing of your loan while the loan is outstanding. We are able to service your loan, are we? And that's their disclosure on if they'll sell your property, but they're using this to date you back to a certain date. And remember, this number here is associated with the wrong loan amount. So this is how I know they're doing this, this 313-2008. And they told her they wouldn't, of course, this uh, all things financial, but they did. That was on Rachel's property, 422 Randolph Street. So here's First Horizons, who she got the loan through, 4000 Horizon Way, Irving, Texas. You can go back and look at the property history. It was met life. A girl named Valerie or Vanessa from uh, First Horizon office in Indianapolis. It had become Caliber, Caliber, met life. At that point in 2012, 2013, she told me about that both of the loans that I gave her the loan numbers for up above that I showed you had been purged from the system. And I said, you know, in the SAP R3, when I used to work in that, if it's purged, you could no longer see it. And she said, no, it says purged right here. So she informed me of that. Notice all things financial. That is a copyright they're working under that they have borrowed or retained the rights to and it's an insurance manual basically is what it is. Notice this is an account number. It's got Rachel Diddy, the address. Current statement date is 328 of a 08. Gives the wrong loan amount right off the bat. Current escrow balance, interest paid year to date. Payment due date is 5-1. Funds applied, due date, 4-1-2008. That shows an assumption, doesn't it? 3 14 is when it was paid. There was an interest paid for some reason. Okay, so let's just take for instance that that might have been a problem. Why would that interest have been paid if she was never late? Because this would be the acceleration date. This is actually the due date. Get rid of the year, 4-1. That would have been an acceleration date. But then they go down to 5-1. And on 314, they pay for 3770. Payment due date 51 from First Horizons for the amount of $66,949. She's making notes there about some things that are going on about her principal and an additional payment that she had to make down to Abstract's title of Richmond. And April the 9th, 2008, she gets a letter from First Horizon about her account number for the first time telling her that U.S. Bank is going to take over her payments. And then U.S. Bank comes in 
on 414. Now she took out the loan on 314, 2008 reportedly. The statement date is 414 from U.S. Bank. She's already made a payment as it shows there to First Horizon and a payment to Abstracts Title of Richmond. And here is 414, 2008. It shows principal and interest, tax, insurance, PMI, payment amount due, loan due date 5 1 2008. Loan setup due date 508. Transaction date 4708. Total received principal amount $66,949.00 slash. Closing uh, interest escrow 58 was a due date, right? 5 of 08. Transaction date 47. 2008 for $264.36. This is the deal, folks. They redid the whole loan right here after the fact in less than a month. And U.S. Bank came in and started collecting from her right away. That's how quick it went, and that's exactly how they did it. And then they came in with a credit card, too. They do that to people all the time. This just shows that this is a tax package, contains tax and interest statement. Rachel Diddy, 422 Randolph Street, 4000 Horizon Way. See the MetLife Home Loans? Division of MetLife Bank. That's the bank that, that formed after the demutualization of Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. Look at the 422 Rand, year 2008, loan number, statement date, 111, 2009, 111, 2011, and 10. They try to come in and say they remodified a loan that they didn't. They were just collecting that whole time. Interest paid, co current total payment, current escrow payment. Interest reconciliation, 173.34, so it shows that MetLife received this from her. And it shows that First Horizon did as well. And that U.S. Bank came in and basically just redid a loan, right, on her? Mortgage insurance premiums, 989.40. She told the judge about that, too. And there's tax identification numbers, of course. And then, of course, here's this chronological case summary, which I think that I need to probably stop there. Thank you.